Um, my name's Steve Hosman and um, presenting with James and Gowan. Um, we work for IBM, we're paid for IBM, but we also work with the confidential containers community. And we're going to be sharing today about a topic called peer pods, which is, um, yeah, how we can set up confidential computing approach in virtualized environments um, on the cloud. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the challenges of running uh, confidential VM. So as Felix talked about earlier, the the move in confidential computing is trending towards confidential VMs. And typically um, when you're running a confidential VM in a um, trusted execution environment boundary, those obviously run as a nested VM within your system. So in the model that we're using um, based on the CASA containers technology, we protect the pod sandbox um, at the level with the confidential VM. So that means in traditional deployments, um, if you had a Kubernetes node um, with a pod sandbox as a VM inside of it, um, that Kubernetes node would have to run as a bare metal system. Um, so that's normally how it's done today. The way that we would like to um, run things and how most uh, cloud providers work is bare metals are quite expensive. So they use virtualization to, um, so they have a big box and then your Kubernetes nodes will run in virtual machines or VSIs um, inside of those. Uh, so you'd have multiple nodes running on the same hardware. The problem we have with this when we then add in the virtualization of the pod sandbox is nearly all um, cloud CSPs don't support uh, that nested virtualization or there's performance performance issues, which means it's not viable. So maybe in the future, um, we'll get to this environment, but at the moment we're kind of stuck with either a very expensive bare metal approach or some nested virtualization we'd like to do, which um, we can't because of restrictions. So the approach we've taken to maintain the security of having your pod sandbox inside a confidential VM or trusted execution environment boundary is rather than having a pod sandbox as a VM inside of the node, we has it, have it as a sibling or a peer pod to the, the worker node you have. And then we create the pod sandbox by reaching out and using CSB APIs to spin up a new VM, uh, confidential VM to run those in. So yeah, there's obviously some challenges involved with this approach, which is um, that the time to create the pod sandbox in a and bring up a VM is slower um, using the cloud um, APIs than it would be to in a local CATA and um, local hypervisor environment where you're just spinning it up locally. And there's some complications with um, networking and uh, resource management is a little bit more complicated in there, but there's also some opportunities. So with PeerPod's approach. So firstly is you don't need to pay for bare metal servers, which are a high cost and you can build on a virtualized server infrastructure that already exists in the cloud. Um, and as, as we've heard many times today, lots of clouds are already um, offering a uh, trusted execution environment uh, for based virtual servers. Don't know if you can hear me now, Steve, can you? Yes, I can, James. Ah, okay, well, there we go. You were doing a good job anyway, but that was annoying, I could hear you, but I couldn't speak. <laughs> anyway. You take over then, James? <laughs> yeah, I, I, can, I can carry on a little bit from there. Um, one bit of context I was going to set at the start was um, last year I presented with Stefan Lisha and sort of briefly introduced the idea of um, the peer pods approach. But um, yeah, I mean, as um, Steve was suggesting and explaining why we kind of needed a different approach and started to touch on the um, challenges, um, obviously um, I wasn't quite, I might have missed a little bit of what Steve said, but I mean, provisioning. Um, is different, uh, resource awareness is different, and the management of the pods is different. But um, through using the cloud uh, infrastructure CSP APIs for the infrastructure, well, we still have a mechanism to provision. We could still got things that are, account for the resource. The, the trick is 
to bring that seamlessly into how you would expect um, a, a cluster to behave. And obviously the challenge, the opportunities are there in the sense that one of the key things is that by using a peer pod, then that peer pod or that independent virtual server has its own SLA. So it has its own network performance um, related to it. Storage performance and security means that the storage can be attached directly to the peer pod. It never needs to be on the actual Kubernetes node itself. Um, and the goal here is obviously to make this a deploy time decision. So it's not that you have to develop anything specifically to take advantage of peer pods or indeed the confidential containers project. This is very much something that you develop your um, containers, you develop your um, solution, the pod definitions, et cetera, and those can all remain the same. And at, at deployment time, you can just choose to deploy to peer pods in the same way as you would specify a different runtime to deploy to CASA containers itself. Um, in terms of um, trade-offs here, there is an obvious trade-off here in terms of performance. I mean, we have the startup time of the virtual server, which is a, an extra thing that you don't normally have. But equally, um, the SLAs that you get from the server when it starts means you've got more guarantees or, or SLAs around the network performance and storage performance directly to the pod and what's running in it. So I guess we move to slide two, Steve. Um, thanks. So uh, this is something that's interesting. So when we started down this journey, we kind of said our answer, but our answer is, is was not just specifically us IBM. This is much wider than that. We came with a seed of an idea introduced to the community. It's gathered a, a life of its own. Um, so the confidential containers effort itself, wider than peer pods, is now officially a CNCF sandbox project, probably hear it mentioned in other places. So within that confidential containers project, that's where the peer pods enhancement, shall we say, effort lives. Um, our goal is that the next um, confidential containers release will include support for the peer pods, although it works today off to one side. Um, and we have support for multiple clouds and environments. And as you can see there, there's a link to a recent dev preview that's part of OpenShift itself. And you can see there that um, support for peer pods exists within a multiple um, cloud or non-cloud even uh, environments. And what you see in the bottom right there, just creeping in there, which will be present when um, Steve runs through the demo, is very much our architecture differences there. So I'll speed up a bit because our, our delays there <laughs> hit us hard. So what basically the key bit here is that you'll see that there are elements of CASA in here. This is an extension to CASA, which builds in the confidential container stuff. The key two pieces in red there, there's a cloud API adapter that implements the remote hypervisor concept. I and mean, basically, it invokes the infrastructure APIs to create the sandbox VM and to set up the actual pod sandbox. Um, and then you'll also see that we um, can't follow the normal gRPC protocol approach within the node. So what actually happens here is that they, we have a, a network tunnel. The gRPC gets converted to TCP, which reaches the agent protocol forwarder to reconvert it back to gRPC to talk to the CAT agent. And so at that point, I think I need to hand over to Steve to run through the demo because we're running out of time. Great. Thanks, James. So yeah, I've uh, pre-recorded the demo. So we've already been beset with enough problems. So just before I um, run it, I'll give you a very quick bit of context. So I'm going to show about the resource management um, piece. So obviously, when you're running in peer pods, we use resources in two places, in the worker node and on the peer pod sandbox VM. But, uh, and traditionally resource management in Kubernetes would all be involved running on the worker node. So we have uh, made an approach to um, mutate the um, resource management with the webhook component to uh, reflect this. And I'll, I'll show that in the demo. So if I um, started off, so yeah, the environment I've got here is a running on IBM Cloud. So I've got um, two uh, virtual servers running and a Kubernetes cluster with both of those nodes. So I've got a, a worker node and a control plane node in there. So pretty, pretty standard stuff. Um, I have deployed the operator, the um, peer pods operator, which is an extension of the confidential containers operator which has given me a number of um, pods. I've got certificate manager and the webhooks. So the webhook um, pod is the uh, mutating admission controller, which does the modification in the resource management piece. I've got 
the um, confidential containers base um, uh, operator in. So the operator controller manager and the operator daemon install, which installs the confidential containers and resources like the CATA runtime. And we're also running this cloud API adapter process as a daemon set pod in here. So that will be running on, on, this, uh, on the worker node in, in the pod. Uh, I've also made for this demo uh, modification to the runtime class um, and added this overhead section. So this is supposed to reflect the overhead you have for running things in the pod. So like the cloud API adapter, the networking stack. So it's a made up number for the demo. But it's saying these bits take a quarter of a CPU and 350 megabytes of memory for instance. So just, just an example um, there. And now here's the pod I'm going to run. So Nginx, everyone's first pod. And you can see the resource constraints that are in the pod. So they, it has the, the request um, each pod for one CPU and one gig of RAM and the limit of two gig of RAM. And it's running with the CASA runtime class. So in this setup, um, it's configured to mean run as a peer pod. So we'll apply that Nginx resource, and then we'll go and look at the logs of the Cloud API adapter component. So um, you can see that we, we've started getting um, commands from the Catashim and Container D. So the first one um, we've reacted to and created a sandbox VM, which is called Pod VM Nginx 561. So that's gone via the CSP API. We've then waited for the set up the network tunneling, so the VXLAN, and waited to establish that connection to the agent protocol forwarder. Once it's happened, we start flowing the commands as usual. Um, so we've created the sandbox and the container for the pause um, container. And then we've got the um, create container uh, request for an Nginx pod. And that means we have had to pull down the Nginx um, image using the confidential containers extension uh, with image RS um, through the cat agent on the peer pod. So we've pulled down the image and the container started and it's performance isn't lightning fast, but it's started much quicker than I could talk about it. So you can see the Nginx pod is running here. So um, uh, it's, it's up and looks like normal. If we look at the resource now, you can see one of the changes we've made here is we've um, rather than having the limit of one CPU and um, one gigabyte of RAM, we've replaced that with a limit of one peer pod VM. And we've added that overhead, um, which we specified in the runtime class to cover the cloud API adapter. So um, updated that resource management to reflect that it's not all running on the worker. So to prove it's it's real, um, you can see that there's a new uh, virtual server instance um, running PeerPod, uh, sorry, PodVM Nginx, as we saw, that's running from our, our image that we set up in the PeerPod config map as part of the deployment. So I'm now going to delete it, um, uh, delete the resource, the pod in Kubernetes, and that is reflected in the uh, VSI. So you can see pod Nginx has been cleared up so I will leave it there because we're um, a little bit behind on time and uh, quickly jump back to, excuse me, the, the uh, last slide. So um, yeah, we've put some links on there and got our emails, but please join us in the breakout session if there's any other uh, questions you want because we don't want to overrun our time anymore.